All right. Today we're going to talk about chapter nine in the book, their textbook, Writing for Success. And so the main, the uh, main piece that we're going to focus on today is paper organization. Now I want to review kind of overall paper organization first. And then after we spend some time looking at overall paper organization, we can start breaking it down by the different pieces. And uh, some of those pieces that we'll be looking at later on will be a thesis, statements, topic sentences, which we've already talked about a little bit, uh, body paragraphs, and then we'll spend some time talking about evidence. And then after that, after evidence, um, the book goes into intros slash conclusions, which we've already spent a little bit of time talking about and reading up on in our book. So first off, I want to sort of show you kind of a roadmap of how all of these things fit together in your paper. And so I'm going to make a little, a little chart here. Um, let's pretend that this here is the first page of text in your paper. So you start off in the beginning of your paper, you all know, is your thesis, or is your introduction, I'm sorry. Your introduction is your first paragraph. So this is your introduction. Now, in your introduction, as the, the book suggests, the thesis statement should appear towards the end of your introduction. And so your thesis statement is the guiding idea guiding idea for the entire paper for paper and so it's pretty important that you spend a fair amount of time getting the side guiding idea pretty hammered out and so this is the introduction this is your thesis statement obviously and so all of this information up here is background information that helps define and helps kind of frame your thesis statement you might have some terms that are specific to your topic you might have some discussion on the uh, current relevancy of the topic that you want to cover here. But then this down here is where you really, you really get into the meat of what your essay is going to be about. So continuing to look kind of here at our, our paper, we have the introduction at the beginning. And then we have our body paragraphs after the introduction. So let me just throw this in here really fast. So this is our intro, then we indent, and we start our first body paragraph. So I'll label these here for you in a second. So this is your intro, and then this would be your first body paragraph. Now in this first body paragraph, remember that the beginning, as we reviewed a couple of chapters ago in the book, this is going to be your topic sentence. Your topic sentence is going to frame what you're talking about in your particular in this particular body paragraph but that topic sentence also needs to revert up here directly relate to the thesis statement if it does not directly relate to the thesis statement and if your evidence that we're going to talk about here in a minute in the center of your paper doesn't relate back to your thesis statement there's something structurally wrong with your paper either you need to think about a different thesis statement or maybe you need to end up dropping whatever content you were talking about in your body paragraph, start over and begin with a new idea for your body paragraph. So your topic sentence is going to frame what you're going to be discussing. And then here, this is where you're going to be including the evidence that you're going to use in your paper. And so this is going to be quotes, this is going to be stats, this is going to be research that you've conducted on the internet to support your topic sentence and to support your thesis statement. And so that's kind of the basic outline of uh, what your paper should look like. So let's, let's uh, go now and spend a little bit of time reviewing the first couple sections of the reading. Okay, so the beginning of Chapter 9 goes through, and it starts talking immediately about what is required of a strong thesis statement. And so the first one, uh, number one here, is specificity. Specificity means that your thesis statement must concentrate on one specific area or topic, and so it needs some focus. It needs to be specific, as the root word here will tell you. Uh, and so make sure that you definitely look at your thesis and you say, is this thesis on one focused topic, or do we have too many topics that we're jumping in here? 
into here. So the next one is precision, and this is one that will help you be specific. A strong thesis statement must be precise enough to allow for a coherent argument and to remain focused on the topic. And so this is your precision is going to help with your specificity. And so let's uh, keep moving down here. The next one is the ability to be argued. When you come up with a, a thesis statement, it's a, uh, it's, you're framing an argument. You're proving something or you're trying to prove something to your audience members in using research and using an argument. And uh, there's a great textbook I used to use called Everything's an Argument. It doesn't really matter how you look at it. You are presenting an argument when you're engaged in academic discourse. And so a good thesis statement must present a relevant and specific argument. And so make sure that whatever your thesis statement has, could somebody take potentially the opposite viewpoint that you're arguing? If that's the case, then you probably have a topic that can be argued. Okay, the next one, number four, the ability to be demonstrated. This basically means that it has to be provable. It can't just be filled with your opinion. Any claim that you make in your thesis, you must be able to provide reasons and examples. And so this right here, this is research and this is evidence. And so you must be able to demonstrate what you're talking about. Okay, so the next one is forcefulness. This would be number five. Forcefulness is a thesis statement that is forceful, shows readers that you are in fact making an argument. The tone is assertive and takes a stance that others might oppose. Now, you don't, forceful doesn't necessarily mean rude or combative. But you want to be firm. You want to have some, some, some passion behind the statement that you're making. But again, any statement that you make can't simply be your opinion. It has to be provable. Okay, then finally, confidence. And confidence works with forcefulness. In addition to force in your thesis statement, you must also use confidence in your claim. Paraphrase uh, phrases such as, I feel, I believe, they actually weaken the reader's sense of your confidence in these phrases. Now, something else that I want to point out here, this is uh, in forcefulness and confidence and just kind of overall structure. We really want to avoid what I like to call the announcement style thesis statement. And that is in this paper, in this paper, comma, I will discuss that's all wasted space. Don't announce what you're going to talk about in this paper. Don't say what you will do or won't do. Just get to the heart of the argument. And so let's scroll on down here and take a look at a few, a few of these arguments or a few of these thesis statements as they're presented in the book. So if we take a look here, um, this exercise as we're moving through, I just want to point this out quickly. This exercise is, is the exercise that you're going to be completing. Um, one of the exercises you're going to be completing in your portfolio entry for this week. It's, it's all typed up, um, but this is where it comes from. So, oh, let me delete that. Okay, so here again are those topics that we reviewed, and then we have some examples of some fairly strong, successful thesis statements here. Um, let's take a look at those. The societal and personal struggles of Troy Maxson in the play Fences symbolize the challenge of black males who live through segregation and integration in the United States. So if we go up and we look at the different characteristics, um, is it specific? Yeah, very specific. We know that we're specifically talking about this character in this play, segregation and integration in the United States, quite specific. Precision, yep, very precise. We know exactly what we're talking about. There's no clarity issues here. Could it be argued? Yep, it definitely could be argued. Um, this is, we could argue that maybe this play does not symbolize or that this character does not symbolize the issues of segregation and integration in the United States. Um, we could, there's a lot of debate that could go on with any um, facet of this topic. Um, the next one, ability to be demonstrated. In this case, because it's more of a literary, a literary paper, we would be using evidence or scenes from the from the play. And there would be scenes that would obviously have to involve this character, Troy. And so, yes, they can be demonstrated. And so the next one, forceful. Is it forceful? Yep. It's, it makes a strong statement, one that has to be defended with evidence, and it's right there. Next one, confidence. Yep, we don't have any I feel, I think, well, maybe this or maybe that. They're all pretty forceful statements. So 
that provides a pretty good example. If you can look through all these other examples here, they all are, are pretty strong examples. Um, the next section I want to get into is weak, the weak thesis statements are frequently where we start. We start off with a pretty weak thesis statement and then we'll hopefully over time revise that thesis statement and end up making it quite a bit stronger. And so there's some, some strategies down here for thesis statement revision. So let's take a look at these. Ways to revise your thesis. This is a really helpful por portion of the reading. And so cut down on irrelevant aspects and revise your thesis by taking the following steps. Pinpoint and replace non-specific words people, everything, society, life, with more precise words to reduce any vagueness. So if we look here, a working thesis, which a working thesis is where you start, and then as you work on your thesis, it should be revised into a much stronger thesis. So let's take a look here. Young people have to work hard to succeed in life. Okay, that's super, super vague. So here we can say, so we specify, we, we get some specificity. So recent college graduates are the young people must have discipline and persistence in order to find and maintain a stable job in which they can use uh, and be appreciated for their talents. So we talk, we're talking about um, being appreciated, talents, a stable job. Obviously, we cut down, we put, replace nonspecific words with more precise words. Great example of that right there. All right, moving on. Let's look at the next one. <clears throat> the next one, clarify ideas that need explanation by asking yourself questions that narrow your thesis. So we want to clarify ideas that need explanation. The welfare system is a joke. All right. So the revised thesis, the welfare system keeps socioeconomic class from gaining employment by luring members of that class with unearned income instead of programs to improve their education and skill set. All right. So here you can see we are clarifying ideas that need to be explained. And so let's kind of look at what's being clarified. So this notion of a joke is what we need to clarify. Why is it a joke? What do you mean it's a joke? Some things are funny to one person, might not be funny to another person. And so let's kind of rephrase this. And so um, we gain some of the explanation here, gaining employment, unearned income, improve education, and skill set. So again, working thesis being revised into a, a much stronger thesis statement that could be used in a paper. Okay. Moving on here, let's kind of take a look at number three. Okay, replace linking verbs with action verbs. Linking verbs uh, of the, uh, are forms of the verb to be, a verb that simply states that a situation exists. So here we go, the working thesis, Kansas City school teachers are not paid enough. So are not is the um, linking verb of to be. So here, Kansas City Legislature cannot afford to pay its educators, resulting in job cuts and resignations in districts that sorely need highly, highly qualified and dedicated teachers. And so as you can see here, we, um, we're going to move into far more specificity, afford to pay jobs, resulting in job cuts and resignations in districts that sorely need highly, highly qualified and dedicated teachers. Um, and so obviously, we can see here that those verbs or change and we get a much more active piece. Okay, moving on here to number four. And number four, omit general claims that are hard to support. Remember, you have to prove whatever, whatever you're claiming. And so here, today's teenage girls are too sexualized. That's a hard one to claim. And the reason being that they're going to describe down here is that probably not all teenage girls are being over-sexualized, but some most definitely. And so here we can see that this is much easier to actually prove. Teenage girls who are captivated by the sexual images on MTV are conditioned to believe that women's worth depends on her sensuality, a feeling that harms their self-esteem and behavior. So this is much more provable. So instead of just saying all teenage girls have this problem, we break it down and we say girls who...